Hello everybody, I'm Sue Moorcroft and today I'm going to be chatting with Maggie Sullivan and Christina Courtney. Um, let's introduce ourselves. Maggie, would you like to go first? Hi, yes, I'm Maggie Sullivan and um, I, I'm uh, in the middle of um, writing uh, an, a new book, but uh, what I'll prefer to talk about is the one that's coming out in two days time, Snow on the Cobbles, which is one of my Coronation Street set. I'm writing prequels to the Coronation Street um, on the television and all the famous characters therein. So um, that's what uh, the book that's coming out next. Uh, and I'm also um, awaiting the arrival of two new books, but more about that later. Christina. Yeah. Again, hi there. I'm Christina Courtney. I write time slip and time travel, mostly or partly set in the Viking times. Um, this is my latest book, which is coming out in December, uh, The Ruins of Destiny, uh, which is about a 21st century woman who travels back in time to the Viking Age and is taken captive by a Viking. Um, he takes her on a long journey to Byzantium, intending to sell her as a slave, but sparks fly between them and fate might have other ideas. Brilliant, thank you. I'm Sue Moorcroft and this is my new book out in paperback roundabout now and audio and ebook. It's called Christmas Wishes and it's set in Sweden and my village of Middledip. Um, Christina made the um momentous comment one day if you ever want to set a christmas book in sweden come with me and we can stay with mum and so that's what we did and had a fantastic trip so what we're going to do today is we're going to take it in turns to ask each other questions and um so i'm going to start with one for christina your latest books partly set in no sorry that's from that's from you to me. I'll get it the right way around now. Okay. So, what attracts you to moving your characters to and fro through time? Well, I've been fascinated by the concept of time travel for a long time, and I'm a total history buff. So, for me, it would be wonderful to be able to go back in time and, and really experience it. But of course, you have to take into account things like the danger, the inconveniences in the past, and also there's. Uh, probably a distinct possibility of being taken for a witch and because you know too much, so you'd have to be really careful. But the whole thing is really intriguing to me. Would you like to ask Maggie a question now? Yeah. Um, when you were first asked to write about Coronation Street um, or stories based on that, had you been a fan for a long time of the program? Oh yes, yes, I'd always enjoyed Coronation Street uh, since the first days that we had a television uh, way back in the 60s. Uh, and that of course was when Coronation Street first began. And it was one of our family favorites. We all gathered around the telly. And uh, of course we were in Granada's own area and it was Granada Television that was putting it on in those days. Uh, and we became very fond of all the various characters. So it was no problem to me to bring them all to mind immediately uh, as soon mm. as I was thinking about a book. Did you do any, any research like get old episodes up on, on YouTube? Is that possible or are they all safeguarded? No, it is possible. Uh, I have watched a few episodes. I didn't need to watch too many. Uh, there are some books that were written quite a number of years ago, um, filling in some of the folklore. And there are websites where there's the folklore of the early days characters. And, um, and so I, uh, I was able to, to fill in any of the, uh, the stories. Uh, most of them are my own invention, but there, were, there are some set folklore rules, as it were, um, and that I was able to get from these books. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, what about your writing life and your non-writing life before you wrote these Cory books or started writing the Cory books? I know that you're continuing to. I've always um, been a, a writer in my own mind uh, and I've written all different kinds of things for many years. 
not always published, sadly. Um, but the what I was most successful in publishing were non-fiction books. Uh, I, in a former life, I was a lecturer and a speech and language therapist, and with colleagues, I wrote some seminal texts for the speech and language therapy students that we were teaching and training. And, um, and so those are, are very proudly on my shelf, alongside all my Coronation Street books, uh, but other various speech and language therapy textbooks. So quite different, but uh, also writing I enjoyed very much, but very different. Well, here's a question we've been sent for all of us um, that we've all written for years before we could um, claim to have a big agent and be published by a big publisher. So what was it that kept us going and stopped us from giving up? I'll, I'll take this one first. I don't know about you, but I just feel compelled to write. I think, uh, and I do feel compelled to get published. And so although I've been with lots of small publishers. I've, I've never stopped wanting to make that final step and be in the supermarkets. It just seems to be blind ambition and blind compulsion. It's like some, somebody, some God pointed their finger at me and said, this is what you'll do with your life. And there are times when I've had trouble, um, particularly in, in the earlier days when I was writing magazine fiction and so you got a lot of rejections because you'd send five out and get five back, you know. Um, and I, I, I used to let it stop me writing for about four days and then I thought this can't go on. I haven't got enough life to waste on this and so I developed, um, it only worked with letters, but I developed a coping mechanism where I'd screw up the letter and throw it at the wall shouting a swear word and then I would go upstairs and write again and that has served me well ever since. <laughs> Christina. Oh, well, I didn't never had that sort of blind ambition. I was more into reading. I was quite happy just reading other people's books. But once I started writing and I got bitten by the bug, I really wanted to write as well. It took me a long time to get published. But I think what kept me going was writing friends, especially the ones made through the Romantic Novelist Association, because we all encouraged and supported each other. And um, one person in particular, I made a pact with that neither of us was allowed to give up unless the other one said so. And it worked out, so yeah. Oh, what about you, Maggie? Uh, yes, I agree with that totally. It was uh, the Romantic Novelist Association that helped me through in the end. I'd always believed I was going to be a writer. I'd always been told that by my family, that I was going to be the writer in the family. And I had believed that one day I would be fully published. Uh, for a full-length uh, romantic novel as I was writing at the time uh, and it was just this belief and it was through friends um, like Christina Courtney and um, Sue McCroft who just wouldn't let me give up and whenever I thought oh I've had enough I can't do this it's not going to work they pushed me on and until one day it did work and it I did, and I did get an agent I do truly believe that the name for uh, an author who doesn't give up is published. Um, you know, that we just know too many people, don't we, who they have just refused to give up. And maybe 20 years later, suddenly they're, they're, they're there in the bookseller having made a sale to a big publisher. Um, Christina, have you, got a, have you got a question for me? Yes. Um... Oh, I really enjoyed our little trip to Sweden last year. Um, I just wonder, what did you like best about the country? Best or the whole trip, actually. Oh, the whole trip was just fantastic from one end to the other. There, there, was, there was nothing I disliked, um, apart from I uh, had a couple of days of not feeling too well and abusing mm -hmm. people's hospitality when I borrowed their bathrooms. <laughs> um, no, I loved it. We got snow. I think that was one of the great things was we had a couple of days of snow and so I was able to take some great photos and, and stuff. Um, I loved in Stockholm, I loved visiting Gamla Stan, the old town, which um, is just the epitome of what I expected of an old town. It's just exactly right. Um, it's not too tacky, but there's obviously a lot there for the tourist. Um, but the buildings are just so beautiful 
and the shops are great mm. and the the um the water surrounding the island and the bridges to it and how it looked at night i loved everything about it and i loved going to the living museum of skansen um the animal garden mm. that was that was wonderful as well but being being in your backyard in Smallland, where your <laughs> relatives are and learning all about you as a kid was quite good also um, <laughs> and just the just like when we went to the cemetery to light to light candles for your dearly departed that was like being in narnia somehow it was just such a wonderful peaceful <laughs> um peaceful day or peaceful hour and uh, and so i had to put it in the book mm. maggie have you got a question for christina yes i've often wondered uh, christina um whether you'd like to write a book in swedish um i know you're fluent in it uh, but <laughs> might be quite different actually writing than reading or speaking so i wondered how you felt about that yes um i would never say never but i prefer to write in english i'm much more comfortable writing in english because I, i've lived in england for such a long time now and although i do go to sweden a couple of times a year i don't feel that i really keep up with the language if you know what i mean all the current expressions and things like that so if I did write in Swedish, it might be a very, you know, in very poor language. So it would be a lot more difficult. It's not that I can't do it, but I definitely feel more comfortable in English. So, yeah. Maggie, have you got a question for me? Yes. Um, thinking about how you really like to research your books by visiting the places that you write about, I'm wondering if uh, money was no object, uh, whether there's... <laughs> You really would. Uh, it's still on your list. You'd love to set uh, one of your books there. Yeah, I, I, um, I have a ready answer to this question. Australia. I know you've been to Australia, but I never have. And as a kid, I had two things I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, and I wanted to be a novelist. So now the Great Barrier Reef is kind of slip down now i realize you have to go there by boat and <laughs> how seasick i get but i guess as a child i hadn't really had so much we were living in malta at the time and maybe you'd go across to gozo um like a 20 minute crossing and uh, even that i avoid now so um yeah i would love to go to australia i particularly want to go to port talbot for some reason a friend went and just told me how fantastic it is and I don't dive now, but I'm sure I could find somewhere to snorkel around the coast and, and see their amazing uh, marine life. And then to set a book there would just be, just come naturally, I guess, from, from a trip. Once you go on a trip, then you start thinking of stories that will fit the scenario. Um, okay, another one for all of us. Do you like having a long lead in in which to write a book or do you work better under time pressure? In other words, are you a procrastinator who needs an, an immediate stick or carrot? <coughs> Excuse me, Christina. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, I don't mind either way. Um, as long as I've got the story in my head, I can write it fairly quickly. And um, so far, I've never needed the pressure. Um, I mean, obviously, it's better if you don't have to stress. But I don't think it would bother me if I had a time deadline as such if the story is there it will just come what about you i i'm a bit of a goldilocks with this question <laughs> uh, um, i like it to be just right uh, i don't like I, don't, I anyway just come to my room and write every day um except maybe you know sometimes i have time off at the weekend particularly when formula one's on but um that's my daily work. So I'll come here and find something to do. Um, but I, I don't like to be totally stressed. I have to say, if I think I'm not going to get something in, and I know I can say to my publisher, can I have another two weeks or another four weeks? And they'll say yes. Um, I then am automatically thinking, well, that's another two or four weeks off the time I've got to write the next book. So I'm writing two books a year and I'm on a, an inflexible schedule for that because there's summer and winter so you can't mess with it um so yeah i just like to be just right how about you maggie yes i i found very strangely that having written uh, the first book 
under quite a bit of time pressure because I was going to Australia. So I did have a, a time deadline before the, uh, uh, the plane took off. Uh, and so I ended up having a lot of pressure and it seemed to work. And I wrote the first book extremely quickly. Uh, and the next one seemed to have a long lead in. Uh, and I found that I actually produce better when I'm under a little pressure. But the pressure I've been under more recently got a little bit too much. So it's, I suppose it is a bit Goldilocksy, trying to find what's just right with enough pressure that I know I've got deadlines that I take very seriously, uh, but not too much pressure that actually it's unrealistic to produce a book that quickly. Yeah, I guess that that ideal is... is um... It's not always possible, unfortunately. Have you got a question for Christina? Uh, for Christina, yes, I do. Um, yeah. um, you're writing about extreme different time periods uh, and you know, slipping from one to the other. Do you have a favorite? Do you feel when you're coming into contemporary, for example, oh, you like I'm coming home, or, or do you not mind? which century you're in? Um, and, uh, the English Civil War, or any part of the 17th century, and I also love the Regency. Um, and I, I feel more at home in the historical parts, really, than the present. So I feel more like, phew, I'm in the histor historical bit now. But um, I don't particularly like any history after the Victorians. To me, that's, that's too recent, so yeah. But anything before that is fine, really. Well, I've got a follow on question for you, Christina, to that really is the historical aspects of your books feel incredibly authentic to me. Um, just as a reader, I'm, I'm not an expert. Well, now that sounds like a backhanded compliment, but <laughs> they feel authentic to me. I should have stopped there. Uh, so tell us a bit about your research processes. Um, I was I think for the coming book, you talked to a professor of Old Norse, is that right? I have been in touch with uh, several people who speak Old Norse, yes, because I wanted uh, to get a feel for the language and also a few expressions to sort of pepper the text with. And it's, it's actually fascinating, it really is. Um, I usually start by doing the sort of general background research, you know, reading anything I can get my hands on. And then I go to museums and places that are connected with the time period. So last year that involved traveling through the south of Sweden and Denmark, basically visiting every Viking museum I could get my hands on. And uh, uh, yeah, that was really interesting. And I also tend to buy items that are sort of replica items from the period. And my favorite at the moment is I've got a, a replica Viking sword, which is awesome. You haven't got no. it with you. I haven't, no. <laughs> it's very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to ask Maggie something? Yeah. Um, how did you feel about being allowed to create new backstories for some of the Coronation Street characters? And uh, which is the favourite one of yours to write about so far? Oh, I loved it. I, I loved the, the notion that although there was some folklore around them and some written in stone facts, which seems a strange thing to say about fictional characters, mm. but, but that's mm. true that there are. Um, but I think, yeah, I think the one who I, is my favorite is the first, uh, Tutana. And uh, I do find uh, Elsie prop, crops up in, in all my uh, later ones. I've just finished the fourth Coronation Street now, and bless her, she does pop up in all of them. Although the first book, uh, Christmas on uh, Coronation Street, um, was more or less devoted solely to her, and I really loved that. I must admit, mm. uh, yeah. The the I didn't show you before, but the um, the latest one that's coming out is Snow on the Cobbles, and dear Elsie, she does crop up in that one, although the main thing story is not about her. And the new one that's coming out shortly, uh, um, The Land Girls uh, from Coronet Street, she also has quite a lot to do with that. She's such a slippery character, I just love her. <laughs> I always liked her in the programme, actually. Um, yeah. But where are we up to? Christina, have you got a question for me? 
Um, yeah, uh, you tasted a lot of Swedish food when you were over there. What did you like best? And was there something that you would prefer to uh, live without? <laughs> I really like the marabou chocolate that your mum oh, yeah. in the fridge with for us. Um, <laughs> the highlight of the day was after dinner getting a bar of chocolate and perhaps taking one out mm. as in the car as well, possibly. Um, I really liked, uh, we had the Swedish mean, meatballs in Stockholm in the, um, in the Hotel uh, C or something attached to the ice bar. Mm. Um, and did I have anything? I think um, when we went and we went to have Yule board, didn't we? Like the, um, the Christmas smorgasbord, smorgasbord. Have I got that right? Yeah, we just about. <laughs> Uh, Smuggles board, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, I I tried a couple of things there. Not so keen on. Um, I think there was there was um, there was something fishy I didn't like. But I'm not very keen on fish anyway. Pickled herring. It was probably pickled herring. Yeah. I felt I needed to try it just because. Mm. Um, but you know. That's it now. <laughs> and I have to do it you've, again. you've done it. <laughs> Been there, done that. So, um, a question for you from me. No, it's, sorry, it's Maggie. It's Maggie next. Um, getting my bits of paper out of order. Yeah, without giving state secrets away, what's the general process between you and HarperCollins and ITV with the Coronation Street books? Um, well, normally um, we, we first have to agree, agree on a character. So I work with very closely with my editor at HarperCollins and we will come up with some ideas of a character who we might want to develop. And then this get first initially gets uh, approved by ITV. So uh, there are sometimes characters they say, no, you, you can't do them because or whatever. But so, so that's the first thing is to agree the character. Then uh, we uh, start thinking about possible uh, plot uh, lines and where the story is going to go. And ITV basically approve a synopsis, um, which, uh, you know, as all writers will tell you, you never stick to 100%, uh, but generally that's the direction that you're sending the book in. And then when the manuscript is complete, ITV do have a look at it again and have to pass it because they will sometimes say things like, well, that's not possible because those two people never met. Yeah. You know, things like that. Uh, so, but they've been very comparatively easy to work with from my point of view anyway, uh, but they do have a say in all of the, uh, the character development. Uh, and then it's very exciting when their uh, um, insignia actually appears on the back. On the books. Yeah, that is, that is super cool, I think. Right, yeah. one, one quick question for all of us that's been sent and, and then we'll talk about what we're doing next before our time runs out. Um, so if you were, Christina, let's start with you. If, we were, if you were told you had to change genres for your next book, what would you choose? Uh, probably YA. I've dabbled a bit in that subgenre before and I really enjoy it. Uh, but um, I'm kind of tempted by romantic suspense as well. I don't mm. know if I could pull it off, but that would be fun. How yeah, about you? I really like romantic suspense. I read it a lot. I kind of worry that I wouldn't be clever enough. I haven't got the crossword mind to do the suspense mm. and I might shy away from putting, they do tend to have a little bit of blood and guts in and I'm not keen. Um, mm. But so I think my dream is that my editor would say, right, you have to write a book in another genre. And I'd say, OK, well, in that case, I want to th do the autobiography of somebody in F1 and you have to find me that person and get me access. <laughs> and obviously pay me billions of dollars because that's how Formula One runs. <laughs> how about you, Maggie? Yeah, I'd love to write a psychological thriller. I have once tried my hand at that. Uh, I found the plotting a little more difficult. So if I wasn't able to cope with the plotting, then I too would like to go for writing someone's biography. I just think that would be fascinating. Yeah. Trying uh, 
um, itemized, but make it interesting reading, not just a list of facts, you know, and really grab uh, the world's attention by somebody I'd like to highlight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it would, I don't know if, if I would be able to do it, if I would be able to subsume my own ego and writing voice to give them one, but it'd be good to try. So I don't know. I mean, my love is football. As <laughs> one. Yeah. And uh, I would love to be able to uh, have access to one of the most famous footballers. Who, who would you choose? Uh, maybe somebody like Ronaldo. Um, right. you know, plays in uh, Let, Italy. Yeah, something like that. Let's hope your editor's listening. So um, <laughs> to, to round off then, let's talk about what next. So what next for Christina Courtney? Um, I've just finished the edits on the next uh, book in the Viking series, which is Whispers of the Runes. It's coming out in June next year. And uh, um, also currently working on the book after that, also in the Viking series, Tempted by the Runes, which will be out in December next year. So yeah, lots of Vikings in my future. <laughs> and what about you, Maggie? I've just completed, thanks to lockdown, I've just completed two books. Uh, the first one is another Coronation Street book, which is called The Land Girls, which I've referred to, The Land Girls from Coronation Street. That will actually be appearing in February. Uh, but I'm also lo launching in January, I'm launching a new series that has nothing to do with Coronation Street. And it's a street of my own making. Uh, and it's a street in the north of England, just before the war. And uh, we're focusing on different shopkeepers and their lives. And the series is called Our Street. And the first book, which will appear in January, is called The Postmistress. And in terms of future, I'm looking to be writing another Coronation Street book and another one in the new series. So we're not sure exactly who I'm going to concentrate on yet. Plenty to do then. I'm... Plenty. <laughs> I'm editing Under the Italian Sun, which comes out in May, and it's set in Italy. Anybody who has read One Summer in Italy, it's set in the same fictitious town of Monte Libertà in um, Umbria. And it's, um, it's an idea that came from nowhere. I wanted to write about somebody who found out there was someone else who had the same name as her, and she realised there was some connection. And um, I've really got to say, I've really enjoyed writing this book. Um, whether anybody else will enjoy it, we'll find out. But uh, I don't know what it was about it, but it, maybe it was being able to write about summer when the weather turned rubbish. Um, and I have got a little bit of a secret project next year. Um, I'm not allowed to say too much about at the moment, but edits have just come in, let's put it that way. So I think we're just about at the end of our time. Thanks everybody for tuning in and watching our little show. Um, I would just like to say that you can probably see different names on the screen for Maggie Sullivan and for Christina Courtney because they do have other names. We've been carefully addressing each other by writing names today. <laughs> but don't, don't be worried that they're imposters. So thanks very much, very much uh, Maggie and Christina and Myra and Pia. And uh, it's been great to chat. And thanks everybody for watching. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.